Hello everyone, I'm Jensen. Today is Wednesday, February 17th, and from winter weather wreaking havoc across the country to President Joe Biden's push to get kids back in the classroom five days per week, I have all the stories you need to know to get in the loop today. But first, let's take a look at the weather happening right here in Northwest Ohio. I'm gonna pass things off to our first alert weather team. Now we are tracking another chance for some snow. I know the shovel probably still out, but you will need it tomorrow. A few snow showers developing by the morning commute. I do expect the roads to not necessarily be snow covered, so it should be a go for the morning commute. But by the time you get home tomorrow, it could be a different story. Steady snow moving in by the afternoon. Several inches of new accumulation on top of the 14.5 we already got over the last several days will likely make for a potentially messy evening commute. Snow arrives tomorrow morning. Follow along there on the timestamp. We're at 8 o'clock a.m. You'll notice this appears much lighter in nature than our last snowfall event. Some areas, including Toledo, seeing snow. Other spots not really seeing much of anything for that morning commute. The snow should become a little bit steadier by late morning into the early afternoon. You'll notice some of those darker blue colors. 12 o'clock this time tomorrow, seeing steady snow across the entire viewing area. Of course, it won't be nearly as heavy as the snow we saw Monday night, but still a good dose of winter weather. By the afternoon and evening, that commute could feature reduced visibility because of the continuing snow and also snow likely on the ground by 5 o'clock tomorrow. So when does the snow end? By about 8 to 9 o'clock p.m., this will move off to the east and give way to drying conditions and our last snowfall for a couple days. Looking at the snowfall totals forecast, only a couple inches out of this one. I do think if anyone gets three inches of snow, it's going to be Norwalk, Tiffin, Upper Sandusky, View Cyrus, some of those communities to the south and southeast. Toledo Metro expected to see right around two inches tops, maybe even closer to one inch across parts of southern Michigan. But all in all, not a hugely impactful snow system, but still enough that you will need to shovel once again. And we aren't the only ones facing winter weather. Storms across the country have overwhelmed power grids in areas that just aren't designed for this type of weather. And it's left millions without electricity during record-breaking cold. In fact, at least 20 people have died, some of them while struggling to find warmth in their homes. And all this cold and snow can be blamed on the polar vortex, a weather pattern that usually keeps to the Arctic but is visiting lower latitudes more and more often. And scientists say that global warming is partly responsible for this shift. More than 100 million people are living in areas covered by some sort of winter weather warning, watch, or advisory as yet another winter storm hits Texas and parts of the Southern Plains. Utilities from Minnesota to Texas and Mississippi are utilizing rolling blackouts to help ease the strain on power grids that are working to meet the demand for heat and electricity. In fact, millions of people were still without power early this morning ahead of the next winter storm moving in tomorrow. The worst U.S. power outages by far have been in Texas, where officials requested 60 generators from FEMA, planning to prioritize hospitals and nursing homes. The state opened up 35 shelters to more than 1,000 occupants. And this winter weather has caused delays in shipments for the coronavirus vaccine in the United States, but the process overall is actually starting to ramp up a bit. The U.S. is vaccinating on average 1.7 million Americans per day, up from under 1 million a month ago. According to the CDC, a lot of that increase comes from people receiving their second dose of the approved vaccines from Moderna and Pfizer, but the pace of the first dose vaccinations has been pretty steady over the last few weeks, hovering an average of 900,000 shots per day. Biden is on track to blow past his goal of 100 million injections in his first 100 days in office, but the pace has to pick up even more to meet his plans to vaccinate nearly all adults by the end of the summer. Now let's look at the states because vaccine supplies for them will be ramping up as well with 13.5 million doses per week. That is a 57% jump from when Biden took office just about a month ago. The administration is also doubling the doses sent to pharmacies across the country. And something else to keep on your radar? Drug maker Johnson & Johnson has just a few million doses of its COVID-19 vaccine in inventory ready to be distributed should the FDA grant it emergency approval. And what about schools? Well, Biden is promising that the majority of students will be back in the classroom five days per week by the end of his first 100 days in office. The comments made during a CNN town hall in Milwaukee marked his clearest statement yet on school reopenings. Biden had pledged in December to reopen the majority of our schools in his first 100 days, but has since faced increasing questions about how he would define and achieve that goal. Asked when the nation would see kindergarten through eighth grades, at least back to in-person learning five days a week, Biden said, we'll be close to that at the end of the first 100 days. 
He said he expected many schools would push to stay open through the summer, but suggested reopening would take longer for high schools due to a higher risk of contagion among older students. And in Ohio specifically, Governor Mike DeWine's goal is to get all students back to some form of in-person learning by March 1st. And we are making progress on that. In fact, early in January, 47% of Ohio students were attending a school that was fully remote. But now that number has lessened to just 15%. And jumping ahead to college students, let's talk student loans. Most by now know that Biden extended the moratorium on student loans, freezing them in place with no interest accrued and no minimum payment required. But what should graduates be doing with that extra money? According to Andrew Pentis, a certified student loan counselor in Ohio, the average borrower owes $33,000 in student loans. A loan that size would work out to $300 to $500 monthly payments for the average graduate. So for those out of work, that money can go toward necessities like monthly bills. But once those are covered, Pentis says the next step is putting money toward higher priority financial goals like an emergency fund. If your bills are paid and you feel financially prepared for an emergency, Pentis says other higher interest debts like credit cards are next in line. But if you're in good financial shape and you don't have concerns outside of your student debt, it'd be a good idea to continue making voluntary payments because during this moratorium, 100% of your payments will go toward your principal debt and when it ends in September, your balance will have shrunk. And for those who need a little extra help during the pandemic, Pentis is actually offering his student loan counseling services for free. I have more information in the description of this video. And before I go, let's talk movies. Disney released today a trailer for Cruella, a 101 Dalmatian spin-off starring actress Emma Stone as the infamous Cruella DeVille. The thing is, I was born brilliant. Born fast. And a little bit mad. <laughs> Disney said the film features the rebellious early days of the legendary villain. The caption of the new trailer reads, Brilliant, bad, a little bit mad, May 2021. The movie is set to be released on May 28th of this year. But that is all I have for you today. If you like this video, hit that like button, and of course, subscribe to our YouTube channel. I'm Jensen, and now you are in the loop.